my name is Nils Anderson. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, I really want to thank Jesus and Eastgate for this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Allie and Pastor Springer, for trusting me and my wife for all of her encouragement. Uh, my testimony and devotion today is on, basically, I had a revelation that I used to have a veil and the Holy Spirit um, in filling has kind of lifted that veil and um, so things that didn't make sense to me before now make sense and I'm just like whoa that's crazy hallelujah praise God right you know I think about my past and how it's certainly not perfect but it's how I got here and just embracing that journey is really important because everybody's got their own journey and we all just have to keep trying you know, the Lord is just calling us to keep receiving Him, to keep working with Him, to partner for the Holy Spirit to continue to move and elevate us and anoint us for what God's calling us to do. God is writing our story, and we have to let Him write. You know, we, we, we like to hold the pen. We need to invite God to help us with that change. I'm trying to work on old habits. I'm trying to plant and nurture uh, new routines like the spiritual hydration of prayer, praise, fasting, counting it all joy. When I look at my past, when I look at where I grew up, uh, I, I grew up in uh, Pennsylvania, moved to Maryland, and I really didn't like that move from Pennsylvania to Maryland. I don't know why, but I just kind of let it be a thorn in my side, and I just kind of languished a lot. And I, I, I was pretty good at calling out to God, like, why are you doing this? And challenging him to something ridiculous. And I'd be like, well, if you don't do that, I'm done. And then I'd always be like, well, that's stupid. And I definitely want more of God. So you'll forgive me, right, God? And, you know, keep working, you know, and just, you know, that's very elementary, right? I mean, that makes sense. I'm small in my faith. I just had a glimpse and I want it to grow. A lot of times I'm battling hard, but I'm clinging to what my flesh knows. So, um, and one of the things that also just really sticks out to me is Lent. Like when I was little, I did Lent, but I picked something, but I didn't consecrate that to God. And I often wouldn't even do it with my full effort. Like I'd have a cheat day or something. And so now Eastgate has really shown me that if you put that time in, to reading the word, consecrating that time to prayer, give it to God, then the fast is meaningful. If, if you're just fasting, it's, it's, not, it's not gaining you anything uh, to God's insight. So that, that's been really cool. Um, and so just trying to go from this place of like focusing on pain or what was wrong, uh, where is God bringing me? How, how can I find the joy in this? What, what is God teaching me? You know, how can I stop trying to be a sideshow where I'm, I'm pushing people's buttons just for fun? And, and I'm, I'm pushing people's buttons, but not to grow, just to push them. I don't know. It was really fun. It made sense to me at the time. Now I'm just like, well, I, I, I've grown past that. And I'm just going to accept I'm being called to that next thing. And another thing God has been doing a work in me is praise and worship. One of the references for this is in 2 Samuel 6. Right now, King David is entering into a city. He has the Ark of the Covenant behind him, and he is just pouring out his praise to God. In verse 16, you see he's leaping, he's dancing before the Lord. He's leaping, he's dancing literally in a circle, which we see at church, right? We also see at church, and this was my past, right? Oh, man. What are they doing? That's weird. Well, what will others think if I if I if I do that? What are they, what are they gonna say if I if I praise like that? It's not for the room, okay? It's for God. The prayer and the praise is to God. He's the only one that we need to focus on. Forget the room. It's about God. It's about encouraging that Holy Spirit atmosphere. It's so amazing. Yeah, it's so amazing. And so I'm trying to be done with being reserved and just let's enrich 
that that Holy Spirit presence. Uh, that's what I want to chase. That's what I want to work on. So David kind of inspires with that. And um, I like how Brother Scott, earlier this year or last year, he talked about how we have to lay our hands on, on the different things in our house um, and really evaluate, you know, where are our priorities? Do we need to change? Because normally we do. And do we have to have some tough conversations with ourselves, with others in our house? Because like David's son Solomon, who had asked for wisdom, what did he do eventually? The world kind of crept in, right? He started having other idols. He started kind of changing what he knew God's direction was for him. And his ministry changed forever. It just wasn't the same. We got to keep God the author. We got to keep God the center of our lives. We got to let him be writing the story. We got to not take that pen away. You know, just have the Holy Spirit Please help us discern how to live. Let's be wise about it. Because when, when I had the water immersed baptism, which I hadn't had previously, when, when I came up, Pastor John encouraging me, Acts 2.38, right? Repent, be baptized in Jesus' name. Forgiveness of sins. Asking for forgiveness of sins. Jesus, forgive me. Free me from my past. I would like to receive the Holy Spirit, God. And I'll tell you what, when I did receive it, what a, what a peace. He just loosed so much from me. I was just like, wow, I can't believe life can feel like this. And now I got to keep chasing after that. I want to increase that experience. I don't want to settle. I want to keep elevating whatever God has for me. I want to chase that anointing. I want to do the things of God. I keep needing to die to my old self so I can grow in Christ. Um, you know, just really asking this new covenant relationship. We're evolving from the law. We're evolving from that. In, in Acts 2, um, a little bit earlier in the chapter, Peter is addressing again the people of Israel. And he's calling them specifically in verse 9 that even David, the patriarch, had died and was buried. And then he leads to talk to them about how in David's lineage, right, Jesus, he died, but he was not buried. No, he rose from the dead. And how that just changed everything. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he brought us a freedom that we had not experienced before. And he was bringing us, what? The Holy Spirit. We're continuing here in, in verse 33. Exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. We, we see this all the time at church. And so in 2 Corinthians 3, just God's word is just so good. It's talking to Corinth and asking them to, to continue building in the Holy Spirit, to not settle, to not let things creep in. We got to push past that. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but tablets of human hearts. It's an issue of the heart. Jesus message was about more than just what the scripture, more than just the law. What is the heart? Where is the spirit leading us? Verse 7, now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. Transitory though it was, will not the ministry of the spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness, praise God? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison to the surpassing glory. And if what was transitory came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. Their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains. When the old covenant is read, it has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. 
My old self, I couldn't comprehend it. I didn't understand what was happening with church. I knew it was different. I had to push past just this thought that I had to know it all. Sometimes we just have to come before him as his child and say, Lord, what are you teaching me? And I'm just going to try that because that's part of what faith is. Trusting that our Father, God, is bringing us to something that is greater. We think we're, we think we got it. But you know what? God is saying, hold on. I got more for you to receive. And then we experience that. And God says, guess what? I got more for you. I got more for you. Jesus has more for us. And so again here, the veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers the people's hearts. The work we do is so meaningful. People have a veil over their heart. I used to have a veil over my heart, and I am so thankful that it's not there anymore, that I can understand these things, that now I can pour more into my relationship with God. God is laying more of an anointing on my life, and instead of rejecting it, Instead of saying, ooh, I don't know what other people are going to do or say if I do these things. No, I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's about me and God. He's taking me somewhere. That's where I want to be. And so I ask us to just have a little prayer. Let's ask the Lord. A time of spirit-moving prayer. God, please make a work in us. God, help me. You fill in the blank. God, help me with this focus on pouring more into letting your spirit overflow so that I can reach who you want me to reach, God. The Spirit of the Lord, what is it you are teaching me, Lord? I want to experience your truth. That is my prayer in Jesus' name that I believe the Lord is calling us to do more of. Surrender what we think and let's go to God and see what he's got in store for us. Let's receive. Amen.